Hello pilots of the internet, welcome to Foldable Flight. In this video I am extremely excited to announce to you the official launch of world record fold and fly planes. Now if you don't know what that is, it's a collaboration between me and John Collins, the world record holder for longest distance paper airplane flight. And we've taken eight of John's very best paper airplane designs, I mean planes that literally boomerang back to you, planes that flap as they fly, the world record plane herself, and many more. And I have made these illustrations for each plane so that when you fold them using our papers, your plane can look like this rather than just a plain white sheet of paper. So if that interests you, you get three copies in a package for each of the eight planes, and it's available for purchase on my website, foldableflight.com, or on John's website, thepaperairplaneguy.com, or on Amazon. So head over there to find those, or Really quickly, check out John's YouTube channel. He has a ton of great paper airplane content there just by clicking that card in the top right corner. Now in this video, we are going to teach you how to fold the bat plane. So really quickly, let's see that in flight. And then I will pass it over to John to show you how to fold it. We're gonna start with our bat plane paper. If you don't have bat plane paper, just grab some thin paper like a nine pound onion skin or even a phone book paper if you can go back in time and find a phone book. Uh, so the first couple of creases are gonna go from corner to corner. They're the biggest diagonal folds you can make. So let's get going here. Um, again, we're starting with the, uh, the little arrow up. And this is a hard fold to make. It's easier to say than it is to do by a lot. Double checking that corner that I got that right. So there's one diagonal made, unfold that. And we're gonna do the other diagonal. I really spread my hands out pretty far when I'm doing this to try to control the layering, but you're still gonna to have to, as I'm doing here, kind of play with the corners to get it to come out right. You wanna, you wanna get it laying down pretty much, pretty close to correct before you commit to making the crease. That's why I'm spreading my hands out so far. Just trying to control these layers here. Okay, now we've got those two guys done. Let's flip it over so that the red-eyed side is up here for this uh, fold. We're gonna go right straight across the center of the page here, folding the page in half. All right, now we're gonna do what's called a water bomb base kind of fold, which means we're just gonna leave that crease folded that we just made and stand it up. So it's kind of a, it's like a mountain, like this. See, it's kind of mountain shape there. Stand it up and press down right where all of the creases meet. It should pop eventually like that. And then just bring the top down as you're letting the sides come in. And that's your completed water bomb base. Now, double check at this point that you've got um, your, your paper so that the red side, the red eyes should be down at this point. That's a double check to make sure you've got the right side up and everything's gonna come out correctly here. So if you're getting a little bubbling at this point, don't worry so much about that. We're just gonna go ahead and do the next couple of steps. Uh, and we're gonna start by, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here. Uh, we're gonna start by moving this corner to the left, moving the right-hand corner to the left, and we're gonna use this crease back here. We're just as the limit, you're just gonna follow this under the under layer, the layer that's just underneath there. So we've moved that corner over, pretty simple, just pretty much as far as you can fold it over. Then we're gonna take the corner up to the top. Like that, and then we're gonna swing it back over the direction it came from. So we're gonna do the same thing to the left side here. We're gonna start with this top left corner and move it over to the right far as it'll go, and then take the, the corner that we just moved, take it back to the top. And then swing that corner 
back to the left. And these corners here might stick out just a little bit at this point. Just You can keep policing them so that they're a little bit uh, tighter inside there, but that's basically what you want here at this point. You've Now you've moved a bunch of layers forward toward the nose. Uh, now we're going to make a crease that goes from this corner right here to this corner right here. We're just going to fold the, the nose straight down. Just should line up pretty closely with the uh, the bat pelvis here. You're going to want to go all the way to the bottom of that layer. And again, keep these corners tucked in as you do that. It'll just come out. It's not going to hurt the way it flies if you got a little bit of uh, slop there, but it, it looks better if you can just manage to keep those corners to the inside. Okay, there's that crease done. And now we're going to fold this back up, this point. We're going to fold it back up. And you could use, if you're using our paper, you could definitely line up the skeleton, which really looks cool. Uh, but if you're just using regular paper, this length is going to be the same as the length that sticks up on top. So what you've done is fold up two-thirds of this point. But again, if you're using our paper, <laughs> you can line up the skeleton. So that makes it look really cool. <laughs> there you go. So the skeleton lined up there. And, uh, you know, once again, keep, keep your eye on these two corners. You can keep them tucked in. But uh, that just looks so great right there. Um, now, we're going to flip this guy over. And now the red eyes it should be up at this point, and we're going to fold in half straight down here. So you can just rotate it this way and fold in half. Now match up the wingtips, and then make that center crease. That's that's what you want to do. Make sure your wingtips here are matched up, and then should be going straight down the center. If all your folding is fairly accurate. Now to make the wings, one of the wings, uh, one of the ways that this guy will uh, be able to flap is that this wing is slightly flexible. We're going to flex this main crease back and forth once we're all done here. But in order to make the wings maximum flexible, when you make the wing crease, there's a natural breakover in the layers here, and there's a crease right here. You can just kind of there you go. You can kind of see it right there. That's this crease right here. That's really what you're going to follow and and create that breakover. <clears throat> And then flip it over and make the other wing match. And you're not seeing those eyes right now. Just you might see a little a little peak over that that fold right there. But once it's uh, opened up and flapping, the eyes are really great. Uh, so now what we're going to do is make some up elevator back here at this edge. And you're going to one edge at a time. This edge and this edge. We're going to fold them over just so that they line up with this long edge here. And so um, one one at a, it doesn't really matter which one you do first. Uh, I always just do the long one first, so it looks like that coming over. And don't go past, just line up to that edge, unfold, and then do the shorter edge. And we'll flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. We've got this long edge we're going to bring up to this guy right here. unfold and then we're gonna do the same thing to the short edge bring it over to that layer oh, went way past let's just back that up there we go unfold and now we're gonna make a little of uh, this is the top we're looking at the eyes on top here um, and we're gonna do a little fold that goes along both of these edges right here it's like the um, the leading edge, but it's the outside edge of the leading edge, kind of where the fingers are on the bat. So we're gonna let's flip it over so that the eyes are down for a second, and then it's gonna kind of closely follow this finger here. It's gonna start at this corner, the, the new crease, and go down to this edge, and we're just gonna fold over about um, a millimeter or two. Call it two millimeters by the time it gets down to this corner here. So it starts at this corner and goes down to the outside edge of the wing and you're just folding it over and then you're going to unfold it so that you get some droop, some leading edge droop. So you're going to want the leading edge of the plane to droop down like that. That's going to help the guy flap. And so that's the right hand side done. We've just folded that over, flip it over again and do, well, actually that, that was the, that's the right side. We flip it over and now we'll be doing the left side, which is because it's upside down, the right hand side of the screen. There we go. Okay. 
Just about all of the folding is done here. We're going to do a couple of adjusting tweaks that are important to get this guy to fly right. We're going to use these trailing edge creases, and we're just going to pinch right where they come together there and make our wing look a little more batty. That's just kind of a fun look. So we just do a little pinch right there. Makes that uh, trailing edge look really cool. The other thing you're going to want to do here uh, is curve these parts of the wing, the first little leading edge of the wing here. Just going to pinch it together and roll your thumb across the bottom as you pinch that together. That's going to do two things, help it aerodynamically, and it'll help the layers stay together. So it, it creates a shape in the wing that's good for the flapping motion, but it also presses those layers together. That little curve helps those layers to stay together. Now, I mentioned this earlier. You're going to want to take this center crease and fold it back and forth a bunch. And you'll feel when it's getting loose enough in there to help you flap, but you know, aggressively fold this thing back and forth a bunch of times, folding it each way. And then you may have to, you know, depending on how aggressive you get, you may have to recurve those wings. And when you fly this guy, it, that just needs to be, you know, flexible enough. The wing crease doesn't hurt to, you know, flex those a little bit too. But this guy will go through a rapid series of stalls. It'll climb. And the wings flex together, then it relaxes and climbs and stalls and climbs and stalls. And that rapid series of stalls is what creates that flapping motion. The bat plane, such a cool looking plane, and the flapping motion is just incredible. Uh, you can try adjusting the up elevator. You can back off, a, sometimes backing off on the up, ele uh, up elevator a little bit helps it flap and adjust the, the leading edge droop. If it's getting close, if it's starting to twitch, start playing with these guys a little bit and uh, do some more recreasing on the bottom uh, body of the plane. But this is such a fun plane to look at and a really cool flight behavior, the bat plane. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button and be sure to subscribe. But even more importantly, if you are interested in the world record fold and fly planes, head over to foldableflight.com or the paperairplaneguy.com and you can find them there. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.